And I found myself in this place where I was just allowing all of the disappointments, the setbacks, the failures, whatever it was to become my identity. I lost myself, I lost my confidence, and I felt like I lost my power in a lot of ways. <sighs> all right, we're really about to do this. <laughs> I actually messaged a client this morning. She was giving us compliments on Authentic, which I so appreciate. And I told her that Authentic feels so exciting, but also like one of the most vulnerable things that I've ever done. But if I know anything based on my experiences this year and also your feedback so far about the series, it's that this series needs to happen. As a community, we're craving more conversations like this. And so I'm really excited to facilitate and to just share. It's almost like I'm opening up my journal with you guys. And I know there's a lot of pressure in the online space to appear as an authority. We are an authority. You are an authority, but we're also real humans, right? And I think it's so important to connect over the things that are real. Uh, and some of those things are going to be messy and uh, not so fun. <laughs> so all of that to say, welcome back to Authentic. I'm so grateful that you're here. We have received the most incredible feedback about the series so far. And it has been so affirming uh, in the sense that we're all in this together and this series needs to happen. It needs to be out in the world. And we're really craving space to come together, not just to celebrate the destinations, but the messy process of arriving in those places. So I'm excited to be here with you. I'm excited to facilitate this conversation. I'm feeling a little, a little nervous about today because I'm gonna basically open up like what feels like my journal with you guys and <laughs> just share what, what I've really been going through behind the scenes at a deeper level. In episode one, I pulled back the curtains on what this year has really been like for me. And we talked a bit about growth and all the good things. But what I didn't share is that I came to this place this year where I lost myself. Um, what I didn't share was the deeper layers of isolation, imposter syndrome, and sometimes feeling powerless. And so today we're going to talk about it. We're just going to put it all out there. And at the end, I'm going to kind of wrap it up with some encouragement for you that I feel like will really hit home. So stick around until the end. So when I envisioned this year being the year of expansion, like I talked about in episode one, I, I envisioned so much external expansion. I, I planned it out. It was intentional. You guys know I'm a planner by now, but I don't think you understand like how much I love planning. As a kid, I remember playing with my sister, Jordan. We would play with Polly Pockets and my littlest pet shop and Barbies and, and all the things. And I got more joy and fulfillment out of orchestrating the playing, assigning roles, planning it out than I actually did playing. Bless her for being patient with me. Oh my goodness. But all that to say, when, when I have a goal, when I have an intention, like it is planned to a T and, and I had my plan for this year and <laughs> didn't actually happen the way that I thought it would. I envisioned so much external expansion, but actually pretty much all of the expansion that I've really needed to do this year, even though we've been growing so much personally as a business, all the things I needed to expand within. I needed to expand my capacity. I needed to work on myself. And in hindsight, I can see that that is the most important and crucial expansion that needed to happen for me this year in order for us to pave the way to fulfill some of the visions, goals, and desires that we have for the future. Like this needed to happen, but it hasn't been easy. It's not been easy. In so many ways, it feels like this year has stripped me of everything. It's been a season of pruning, releasing, surrendering, which I'm not very good at, and really coming to the end of myself, really expanding my capacity so that in the next season we can we can carry the weight of what we're building. We can sustain it, which we talked about in episode one. This year has thrown curveball after curveball. We started the year by finding out that we couldn't actually build our house this year. And that was really disappointing. I think I'm going to do a full episode on that particular story. Outside of that, goals that I'd set weren't being met. We were making progress, but I was just so fixated on the goals that 
weren't being set, the setbacks we were facing in the business. We've also been navigating tough dynamics and relationships with clients and just people in my life, you know, life. And sifting through disappointment and frustration and self-doubt, all of these things were coming up for me. And these things individually sound so small. It's like, okay, like that's not that big of a deal, but it felt like everything was just compounding over time. It felt like every little thing was just slowly chipping away at me. It was really shaking my confidence. And there have been multiple times this year where I have looked at Josh sometimes with like tears streaming down my face and telling him, I have nothing left to give. I am done. Sometimes that was energetically because when you're moving through all of this inner work, how many of you guys know it's, it's tiring? It really is. It weighs on you mentally. It weighs on you physically. But there were moments where I was actually communicating. I don't have any value to bring. I don't have anything good to bring anymore. Ultimately, I'm not valuable. And I found myself in this place where I was just allowing all of the disappointments, the setbacks, the failures, whatever it was to become my identity. And I really, I lost myself. I lost my confidence and I felt like I lost my power in a lot of ways. And nine times out of 10 this year, all I wanted to do is hide. All I wanted to do is retract and not show my face. And that's made it hard to feel as though I'm showing up authentically because I'm excited about our business and I want to share because we're doing incredible things. But behind the scenes, there's so much inner work that's happening. And it's been hard to show up 100% talking about leading and innovating and growing when I feel like all I want to do is hide, you know? And sometimes it's, it's about intentional presence versus perfection. I understand that. But for me, it took being stripped away of everything in another country in the silence to kind of start finding my, my way back again, to start digging out of this hole. About a month ago, Josh and I, we went on a full month of travel. And let me tell you, it was the most inconvenient timing. There's never really a, a truly convenient time to take a step away, especially when you're running your own businesses, you have responsibilities, but we did. And uh, we went to South Carolina, we went to New York, went to Lake Como and Switzerland, and I did not realize how much I needed to take a step away until I actually did. Whew. And I realized it, it hit me hard because in the silence, you can hear yourself. When I finally slowed down, I felt like I heard the stillest, smallest whisper of a voice just peeking through and, you know, so much of this year, it's just been me going, 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 paving the way, leading, problem solving, all things that we actually need to do as business owners. It's actually a responsibility. It's an, a privilege to do that. I've been serving our communities and navigating relationships, just dealing with tough shit. Like it's just been tough. And my natural mode of operation in those seasons is just keep going, 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 going. I don't retract and stop everything, I just keep going, going, going. And in all of that, my voice was so suppressed. And when I finally heard it again, when we were in Italy, in this cute little Airbnb in Lake Como, I heard this question, what and who are you allowing to inform you of who you are? I feel like that just needs to be repeated. What and who are you allowing to inform you of who you are. I lost myself because I lost my focus. I lost sight of the truth. I started allowing so many of those external pieces, those experiences, those feelings to define who I am. Have you ever been there? And listen, you know, I'm still in the, I'm in the weeds of this process. I'm still navigating this, detaching my identity from my experiences and the business and all the things. But that's the point of this series. We aren't just going to talk about things that are resolved. And in hindsight, we're going to talk about things as they are in process, because I am willing to bet that there's someone watching this that can relate. So I want to share my story now versus when it is resolved. We're going to talk about the process. We're going to embrace it. We're going to be in it. 
and it's okay if it's not fully resolved. Ultimately, here's what I'm trying to get at. If we're not careful, life can just strip us bare. It can chip away at everything that we are. And instead of moving through life with resilience and hope, keeping in alignment and fixated on what is true, we can start identifying as inadequate. We can begin placing our identity in all of the experiences that we're having, you know, failure, doubt, setbacks, fear, frustration, whatever it is. And instead of focusing on fostering the fire inside of us, we watch and become consumed with what seems to be burning all around us. You know, maybe a client canceled a contract, you had a fight with your spouse, you didn't hit that goal. Whatever it is, we start focusing on all the things outside of us and what seems to be going wrong, which truth alert, most of the times, the things that seem to be going wrong are actually setting you up, working in your favor. They're actually setting you up for success in the future. It's a setup, not a setback. But this can actually manifest in the form of comparison you know, look at what they have versus what I don't have. Everything's going well for them. Why isn't it for me? Anxiety, worry. We lose focus and we forget who we are. And that's where I found myself. And so today I want to remind you of this. And I want you to just let these words sink in deep. You are not your failure. Disappointment is not your home. And being small is not in your nature. It's just not. Don't let life chip away at the incredible power that you carry, at the force of nature that you are. We were never promised an easy life. We were never promised that everything would be easy for us. Nothing meaningful is achieved or created or experienced without some pressure and growing pains and struggle, right? It's a part of the process. It will not always go according to plan even though it pains me so much because I am such a planner. It won't always go according to plan. But who you are cannot be shaken. Your worth, your value cannot be questioned and your power can't be measured. And I wanna ask you this question. I want you to even take this to your journal. How can you become so aware of the innate power that you carry that everything else just falls away? It doesn't matter what so-and-so is doing or creating or achieving or living. It doesn't matter what seems to be going wrong outside of you. Focus on the power that's within. Focus on who you really are. And if you're feeling small, I encourage you to just get quiet with yourself. Get in the silence for a moment and get in touch with the fire inside of you again, even if it is just the smallest spark. Get in touch with that. The world, your experiences, and even people may try to tell you who you are. Don't let them. You know who you are. Power, beauty, wisdom, a force. That is who you are. So don't fixate on everything that seems to be crumbling and burning around you. Focus on fostering the fire within.